Hi everybody. Looks like I got everything set up. Sorry I'm a couple minutes late. I was doing really good. Get on and my tablet decides to unlock to log off of Facebook. So I had to go find my passwords because of course I don't have that memorized. <laughs> so I'm here though. Uh, looking forward to stamping with you. Let me get my chat going up here for YouTube. It's always something that keeps disappearing on me. There we go. I want to make sure Sarah base uh, comments. Now I do want to let you know those of you that are watching on YouTube I will try my best to answer your comments, but um, I will go back and look at the live chat. Hopefully the live chat's working this time. When I went back with my live a couple days ago, I couldn't see the live chats anymore. So what you do, if you have a question and I don't answer during, during the video, come back to the video and look at the regular comments below and I'll get it answered and I'll pin those answers at the top of the comment section. And those of you on Facebook, it's super easy. If I miss your question, I just go back and comment right underneath your comment. YouTube's made it a little bit harder, but that's okay. So I want to make sure you knew all about that. Um, let's see. I think that's all I need to tell you. That's it. Okay. <laughs> I thought there was something else I needed to tell you on that end, but I think we're good. So I want to share with you some cards. I'm going to do uh, another thing I did a couple weeks ago, I think it was. I think a lot of people really liked it when I did this. I came up with, oh, hi, Jane. I came up with a... Um, card layout or sketch, card sketch, whichever we, I've heard them called both ways. I usually call them card sketches. And um, I'm making three different cards from that card sketch, but I wanted to make sure I used the, some of the new stuff that I showed you in my um, Stampin' Up! unboxing video I did on Wednesday. If you missed that, I've got a link to it below in the video description, and you can go back and watch that when this live's all over with. And if you come in late, then you can always watch the video too after it's, um, well, if you have to, actually, you're all here at the beginning. If you have to leave before it's over, you can come back and watch the recording and catch up later. So let's go ahead and switch a screen real quick. Oh, I forgot. This was the screen I was going to go to when I told you about my video. This is what the uh, picture, the thumbnail will look like if you're looking for the video. But I did do the Facebook, YouTube Live um, showing all of the Stampin' Up! goodies I got. And it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of feedback from people that really liked it. So if you haven't got to see that yet, make sure you check it out. And I want to tell you real quick, um, we are doing another Facebook online party. And we're doing a little different this time. And it should make it a whole lot easier. The way you get an invite is, is if you place an order with me by May 21st using host code KPVZ7UQX. I think I forgot to put that in my description below. I'll get that changed when the video is over. But if you use that host code, if your order is $150, under $150, use that host code, then I know you want to be uh, invited to the party, and I'll get you invited once we get that Facebook page together. And that's usually the earliest the day before, which would be the 21st, or that morning on the 22nd. Um, that, we thought that would just make it a lot easier on everybody, and um, that way you can get some of your retired stuff before they disappear completely, because... I know we're excited about the new catalog, but you don't want to forget about all the stuff that's retiring. Okay, I forgot to put a picture. Well, here, we'll just go back to the picture here. Last time I did this, I had a little separate picture of the layout. There's the layout there on the left. So that's the one we're going with. And I'll show you three different looks that you get with that uh, layout. So let's go ahead and go down here and we'll get started. I'm going to use the birds and branches bundle. And I, when I saw this die, actually this dies, I was really excited about. So, of course, I'm using that. But aren't these gorgeous? These are going to be in the new annual catalog. And you'll be able to start ordering from the annual catalog on uh, June 3rd. But I love that there's a nest and there's even a die for the nest. Just a lot of neat little things. Like the bird will go, you can have them kissing or looking different directions. I like that a lot, too. And it is a two-step stamp, but it is a photopolymer stamp set. So it's really easy to line up, and you'll see that here in a minute. The dies I'm going to be using are this one. I'm going to use, I believe, yep, I have to look real quick since we've got the mirror image of both of them. This is the bird I want. I know this is the, they've even got ones for the little uh, bird feet or claws, whatever you want to call them, because the bird's going to go different directions. So they even have another one. Where did it go? Right here. So I've made sure that I put the one I wanted in the nest so I didn't get mixed up with that. And I, oh, and we do need the flower. Where did I put the flower? There we go. So those are the dies we're using there. And I'm going to use another bundle. This is the Lovely You bundle. And it's bundled with this really neat punch. You get two different uh, tags or banners with this. I'm trying to get the lights so you can see it better. That's a little better. 
it's always hard with the, the way this shimmers. So you might be able to see it better here on the end. But it makes two different labels, and you're going to see it firsthand when I start doing uh, the next, the first two cards use this punch. And I'm using both different types so you can see what they look like. So that's the Lovely You Bundle. And I think we can just go ahead and get started. Oh, I am using, I want to show you all the new stuff I'm using. Also using the Tasteful Textile um, embossing folder. I keep going up too high. There we go. So those are all the new things I'm using on the first card. I'm going to grab a piece of uh, Pool Party. This is eight and a half by five and a half. Hi, Marlene. Glad you're back. I'm going to grab my, oh, I need to get my YouTube chat back up now that I'm done switching screens. Oh, yeah, I can tell I've got some. Hi, Susan. Watching from Wisconsin. Hi, Vivian. Glad you're back. And Claudia. Remember, you come in before too, Claudia. Glad you guys could all make it. So we've got an eight and a half by five and a half piece of pool party. I'm going to fold this in half. Like so. I always just make sure I get those uh, corners lined up. Okay, I'm hoping I didn't freeze. There we go. Good. There is a major delay when I'm looking at my screen. It looked like it froze on me, but it didn't. Thank goodness. Okay, let's keep going. So I've got this ready. And I'm going to grab a piece of crumb cake. This is four by five and a quarter. And one thing I said in my video a couple days ago, this Birds and Branches, if you have not gotten the ball uh, Bird Ballad Designer Series paper that's in the annual catalog, make sure you get it before it retires if you want to get the stamp set in the new catalog. I think that I'm really sad that this paper is going, but all the birds go perfectly with this stamp set too. So if you do like this paper, then make sure you get it before it retires. And it's even on sale. It's only $8.05 for the full pack, and it was normally $11.50. Um, the number is 149592, but just look up Bird Ballad DSP, and you'll, you'll find it. So this is a 4 by 2 inch piece. And when I cut it out, I want to make sure I had a bird near the bottom. And you'll understand why here in a minute. So let's grab this and put some snail on it. Hi, Glenda. Glad you're here. I'm always glad when you guys come. And if you ever like anything or just want, I love it when you interact with me. It's a lot of fun when you do. So if you want to comment like some people have been, I thank you for that. You can hit like, love. I like seeing all those little things floating up in the air. It makes it fun for everybody too. So you put that on the bottom. And I'm going to grab a piece, actually two pieces. I didn't want to use, I was going to be wasting a lot of my um, ribbon here when I put this square that I'm going to put here in the middle. So instead of having all this wasted ribbon right here, I just did two two-inch pieces. This is, this is saving me probably about two inches on a piece of ribbon, but... If you're like me, you want your ribbon to go as far as it can go. So I'm gra grabbing my silicone mat, which is something we do still have. And it will be in the new catalog, thankfully. I'm using this because this makes it, if glue gets on here, like a little bit did just there, it rubs right off. No problem. Here, it makes it so it doesn't stick on my work surface. So that's why I'm putting that there. Hi, Joni. Glad you're here, too. It's nice to see some of my cropping buddies haven't got to see for a while. Okay, so I'm going to wrap that one there and put some more snail on each end again. So like I said, this is a great way to save on your ribbon. It doesn't have to be perfectly lined up, but I knew I just overlapped the designer paper on the other end. So there we go. So we've got that ready to go. Actually, that one did get all cockeyed. That's one nice thing with ribbon. It will stick, but you can also usually pick it back up again and move it up for little bit anyway. So that's ready to go. Yep, now we're ready to put that on the card base. You always want to make sure you get that ribbon wrapped around before you put it on your card. I have been, I have done that so many times and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. You get to work and it's like, oh, I forgot the ribbon. Okay, so there we've got that. So we've got the card base done. Now we're going to start using some of the new stuff. I want to grab a piece of old olive. This is a three and a half by three and a half inch piece. And you run it through the big shot. I wanted to have um, all the leaves here to be on the top, bottom, and my left side. So you get it centered completely. Because what this is going to do, it's going to die cut a negative of this. So you run it through your die cutting machine. And you come out. Oh, once it's cut out, then you're going to emboss it. 
So let me grab that folder so I can show you how I did it. But this is the one that's already cut out. You can also tell it's already embossed. But after I die cut it, then I just put it in here, made sure it was pretty straight. Then that'd be perfect since this is kind of a random thing. Run it through your die cutting machine or embossing machine. And there you go. And that's that textile. Isn't that neat? I love the look of that. Hope, yeah, I think you're seeing that pretty good. Okay, so that's, I love that. So you die cut first, and all of these little pieces came out. I couldn't believe they practically fell out. I didn't have to do anything. So I love, our dies are cutting really good now. I love them. So that's ready to go. Then you need a piece of, um, let's see here. Oh, let's go ahead and do this. This is a piece of 3 and 5 eighths by 3 and 5 eighths Whisper White. It's just a little bit bigger than this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp a branch here that I want to be showing underneath here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get that, lay it where I want it, get it pretty centered and straight, grab a little pencil here. And I'm just going to trace the uh, window of this just a little bit. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Just a little here. Pretty much just that side right there. So there we go. Now I know where I want to put my leaves and my branch. So here's some this leaf stamp, and I'm going to do Old Olive. And then there's a twig here. There are two different twigs. I'm using the smaller one in the set. And that one's going to be the soft suede. So I know I am kind of want it, wanted it over here where there was really no leaves and that opening. So kind of put it, I'm just eyeballing it, maybe about right Let's see, that little opening lets me know that's where the leaves start. So I want it in between these two areas here. Just a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to bring in, and I was loved how easy this was to line up. Oops, throwing my stuff around again. Got my old olive. Here are the leaves. I'm going to stand up so I can see a little better. And these line up super easy. There you go. Voila. And it's okay that you're going over. Actually, I probably didn't want to go over that much. Let's turn this over and do it again. I just realized what I did. I didn't look at that as closely as I wanted to. So let's lay this down. It's always nice having two sides of cardstock because I did not want that green leaf to be showing over here and that's what it would have been doing. So let's do this again. Try, trace it around real quick. Oops, I keep doing my old olive part. There we go. So now we're ready for that. This time I'm going to make sure I get that brown. I should leave the soft suede open because I use this a lot on this card. I'm going to bring it over a little more like this because I do know there are going to be leaves over here. I had forgotten that part. So let's bring it over like that. Now we can put the leaves on there. Stand up again. It's okay if it goes outside of the circle a little bit. But you do not want it going that far over like I did. That's much better. Okay, I think we're done with the olives. So we'll get that closed. I always like to close them to make sure I don't get ink on something I'm working on. Plus, it makes them from getting dry. Okay, now I think we can go ahead and put this on. So I'm going to take, since this is embossed, I'm going to use multi-purpose glue. Actually, I'm going to see which one I like better because that still wasn't quite where I wanted it. Let's turn this around, and I don't think I'm going to worry about having a little... Yeah, because that's really more where I wanted it. So now you're, we're finding out, that's the nice thing with the two, you can see which one you like better. There's just a little bit of green. I'm not going to worry about that. So let's do it that way. Oh, come on. I've got four bottles over here, and of course I pick up the one that's getting empty on me. Okay, we're going to throw this over to the side. <laughs> I don't know about if you know, sometimes with the multi-purpose glue, it feels like there's still glue in it, but there isn't. Okay, there we go. This one's perfect. And I'm not going to put any on that, the leaves. I'm just going to put it on the outer parts of this square. And center it right here. Okay, and I do see a little bit of the pencil mark showing, so I'm going to grab my eraser, and I would use one of these erasers. It works a lot better than the, um, actually this might have been easier to do. I forgot I did this when I originally made the card. You might want to erase that before you put this on. 
I have had a headache all afternoon. Finally, it's going away, so I, but I think it's affecting my thinking. <laughs> the weather keeps changing. I don't know about you. The weather keeps changing, and I keep getting headaches in the afternoon. Not every afternoon, but we, the weather's changing again this weekend, so crazy. Okay, so we've got this ready to go. And, oh, hi, my, Mary. Oh, you got to catch yeah, Good, I'm glad you get to see me. <laughs> Glad you could catch me live. It's in Sandy. Oh, oh, from British Columbia again. Thank, thanks for coming back. Okay, so we've got this. And let's go ahead. And I'll, I'll just put this over to the side right now. Now we're going to stamp this, that uh, bird. I love this bird. We're gonna, what you want to do, when you have photopolymer doing two-step, you want to do the dark color first. So let's do this here. And let me stand up here so I can see what I'm doing. I never want to get my head in the way. You don't want to see the back of my head. There we go. So we've got that done. Now we're going to grab the petal pink. And this is a bold version of that same bird. But since it's a lighter uh, color, you're not going to notice that I'm stamping pink on top of that brown. It's just going to show in the openings. So I'm going to line that up. And you're going to see something really neat. I love our photopolymer stamp sets. If you look closely, I don't, hopefully you can see that in the video, it's a little lighter right here. I love how they're able to get the detail with those. So that, that just happened. That's the way it's supposed to be. That gives you a natural highlight. Okay. And then I decided I really didn't want that opening for the wings to be uh, pink. So I'm going to grab the wing stamp that goes with that and use crumb cake. Because I want it to be a little lighter also. Oops, don't want to do it upside down. Line that up. There we go. And that darkened that up a little bit. So now we've got the bird done, and they thought of everything when they put this together. I think we're done with the crumb cake, so go ahead and close that quick. They've even got a stamp for his little feet. So I'm going to grab my soft suede, stamp it right there. So we've got his little claws, and I think we're done with soft suede now. Let's close this one up. Now I need three yellow flowers, and these are all in the same stamp set. Bring this down a little bit. Stamp your three flowers. Okay. And now I can die cut these out. I already got the dies out from the beginning. Let's see if I can get a hold of them here. So this one fits perfectly like that. I love how our dies line up now. Then you've got, you'll have, there's only one flower stamp. And the neat thing about this, it doesn't matter which way you put it down, just as long as you have the petals, because they're all the same. Love that. They really don't look the same in the um, stamped image, but it is in the die, and it just it does perfect. And then this will go right here. Actually, you probably run it through your die cutting machine this way. Then I would do these and run it through, and then do the last flower. But the magic of television, I've already got them die cut. Here are my flowers. Oh, hi, hi, Danette. Glad you're here. Look at my YouTube. Okay, I don't want to neglect my YouTube people. It's hard to look at two screens at once. Okay, so now we've got all the pieces that we need, and I want to do a greeting. That's right. I was using two bundles on this one. So we're going to grab, where did I put that word? There we go. This is from that Lovely You stamp set. It says, Wildly Grateful. And I'm going to use a piece of um, Whisper White. Let's see if I can get a hold of it. This one is a two and a half by three and a quarter. And I find when um, I use these type punches that punch the uh, end of it to do it first before you stamp. And I want to make sure you, this is the one I'm using this time. And I love the guides on this. In the, my uh, unboxing video, I forgot, didn't know what the widths were. This is a half an inch, three quarters, and then an inch. I love having one because our banner one starts with uh, half or half an inch. Yeah, so I like having actually an inch. That's right, inch, inch and a half, and two and a half. So I love having one that's narrower. So I'm going to put that in as far as it goes. And the way you figure that out, just make it a quarter of an inch longer than what you needed if you're only going to do one end. And that's all I'm doing is one end. So that gave me that one. So I could have made it even wider. I wanted the... Um, Three quarters of an inch. I could have gone to the half an inch or one inch, but the three quarters worked perfect for the greeting I was using. So now I'll grab 
Oh, I did need the soft suede again. Knew I should have left that open. I'm going to stamp this. I'm going to stamp it over just a little bit. It's pretty much in the center, though. There we go. Now we're done with that one. And let's bring all my pieces in. Probably easier to go ahead and put this together before we put it on the card. I'm going to lay everything down first. Oh, let's put the, before I lose these guys, the little claws for him. I love that they've got a little white space on top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my glue dots. Oops. And I'm going to put one here on the end. I want to make sure I don't get it where it's stamped, though. Let's get it near the top, and I'll probably, I'm going to let a little bit of it hang over. I don't know if you can see that a little bit, but the, the glue dot is up a little bit above it, and that's fine. So now I've got it above his little feet, and if you don't, then you can take your thumbnail or fingernail and kind of push that up a little bit so it's not showing. Now I can figure out where I want those to go, and I think I want them about right there. So now he's got his little feet. And so I'm going to lay this down. I think I'm going to have him about right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to move that. I know I want that there. Oh, there's my snail. Put the snail right across it. And I knew I wanted the end to be near the edge of the old olive piece. And then I want this guy popped up. He's special, so he needs some special treatment. So we'll pop him up with dimensionals. I'm going to grab my take your pick tool. Those of you who watch my videos, this is a new trick I learned. I don't know about you, if you get these paper backings everywhere, it drives me crazy. If you take your, uh, uh, the paper piercer part of the tool, put this in at an angle and scoop it up. That, now I've got both of them right there. I can just take them off and throw them in my trash. And they're not falling everywhere. Makes it a lot easier. And now I'm going to put this little guy. I don't, I, want, I don't want to see the ends here, but I want it real close and make sure I still see my words. And I'm fine with him hanging over a little bit because he's not going to be hanging over the edge of the card. Now I'm going to figure out where I want my flowers to be. Put one there, one here. And I left a little bit, made sure I didn't put adhesive near the edge because I want, knew I wanted to tuck a little flower in there. That looks pretty good. So let's grab the glue dots again. Find my first one. So I decided to only pop my bird up. But you can do whatever you want. Now that one, I didn't do it. I actually like that. It got tucked in underneath one of the leaves. That's another good reason not to uh, tack those down and just glue this the corners. Makes it so you can stick a flower underneath one of the leaves if you wanted to. Stick that there. And this one I did want to go over, but I'll make sure I don't cover up those words. And I thought, oh, it needs more than that. Let's put some bling on it. So we're going to grab my rhinestones. These are in the annual catalog now. You can't purchase these. I'm going to put one right there. I love the take your pick tool. And if you don't have this and want to get it, it is in the annual catalog now. So you can still purchase this. You don't have to wait. There we go. So those are all ready. Now I think we're ready to put this on the card and we'll be done with this one. And see, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to see that. <laughs> I love two sides to cardstock. Bring my card base back in. And there we go. That is what the original card layout looked like. So that one's done. So that's, once again, that's the birds and branches uh, bundle along with the lovely you bundle. And if you didn't see those, uh, you can watch the, uh, come back and watch the video when we're done. Because I showed those stamp sets and stuff at the beginning. Okay, so now we'll put that over to the side. So I'm going to bring that back here in a minute. Oops, just almost started knocking things down. Oh, I wanted to give you one little tip. Um, our stamp and pierce mat, they retired it, and you also cannot buy it anymore. That was the thicker. Oh, here, let me show you. This is what it looked like. This is what I always used with my photopolymer and um, made the photopolymer stamp perfectly. I even used it with my rubber, but we, this one's even sold out now. So what I've been using, if you have the Stamparatus, the Stamparatus comes with this little foam pad 
this works just as good as that stamp and pierce mat does and if you don't have the stamp rattus and right now you really don't want to invest in one right now you can purchase this individually and that's in the annual catalog right now too i do suggest getting the stamp rattus sometime though because i love it i use it a lot but this putting it underneath my um grid paper gives me the support i need to get a crisp uh, image when I stamp. Okay, now we're going to use one of my favorite things I got. This is the Celebrate Sunflowers. It's from the uh, Flowers for All Seasons. I think it's what it's called, Sweet. I should have written that down. Oh, I think I did. Yeah, Flowers for Every Season. It's my favorite sweet. I love that it covers all the seasons throughout the year, so you'll get your money's worth out of this. Now, this is more of a fall version, but I think sunflowers are pretty no matter what. Is, I saw a wow go up. Isn't that die neat? I love that die. <laughs> so we had to use it. Now, because of COVID, we weren't able to get uh, the designer series paper. They do actually have that for us to get now. It came like the day after I placed my order. But the in-color ink pads weren't available. They'll be available by the time the new catalog comes out in June for everybody. But we weren't able to get the ink pads. So this uh, suite uh, uses all of the new in colors. So I'm still going to be able to show you the cardstock. So it's pretty neat. So we're going to be using this one. Oh, you know what? I want to get these dies. Well, no, they'll be fine. Since I'm doing three different cards, I'm using a lot of different products. And the neat thing with, well, you'll see this here in a minute. This lines up with this. So if you want to have a backing, which is what I'm doing, you can line them up. You don't have to fussy cut around it. I love that. So we've got these two here. And I'm doing the same thing with the leaves. And then I need a flower center. So those are the dies I'm using with this. I love that. I can't wait to start stamping with this and coloring it in. So I'll be making some cards with this real soon, I'm sure. I don't have to use in colors. I'll be using different colors until I get them. And I'm also using, now this is a folder you have seen before. This is the Ornate Floral. This is the one that's in the um, Ornate Garden Suite that you're, you can order now. This is going to be in the new catalog. It's brand new. But they gave us two months ahead of time to be able to order it. So if you haven't gotten that yet, I love this. And you're going to see why here in a minute. It's gorgeous. Okay, let's grab my cardstock. And this is one of the new colors. I think it is a really neat color. This is Cinnamon Cider. Yes, I have to remember all these new colors again. So we're going to go ahead. This is another 8.5 by 11 like normal. And I'm still using that same card layout. But we're going to adjust it just a little bit. We're going to do a landscape card. So it'll be like this. I'm going to grab a piece of, in my video Wednesday, I kept calling this Misty Midnight. It's Misty Moonlight. Isn't that a pretty blue? I, it's actually a little different than what the video is showing. It's really hard to tell with videos to get it to be the exact color, but it's a beautiful blue. I love it. So you can see how that, isn't that neat how that embosses? I love those flowers. Okay, so what I'm going to do Oh, and we did not be able, we weren't able to get the designer series paper on uh, Tuesday, but we were able to get the Memories and More card kit that's in the set. It's called uh, The Flower for Every Season. And I went ahead and cut up one of the cards to use this. So that way I still had some designer paper I could use. I just used one of the cards. So you can cut those cards. You don't have to keep them intact. <laughs> A lot of neat ways you can use those. So since this is embossed again, I'm going to grab my glue Get that glued on. I'm going to put that right over here. Oh, I think it looks better this way. I like the leaves going up. But you can do it every way you want. There's really no right or wrong with the way this paper goes. Hold it down for a few seconds. The glue takes effect. Now there's some beautiful ribbon in this uh, flower for every season. Flowers for every season. This is the combo pack. It's got this pretty white remember they said how wide this is well I could measure it well I forgot I'm on the metric side I stamped up my met my other side imperial side but there's it's what whisper white it's a really neat texture it's a cotton type ribbon and we've got this really neat baker's twine it's got white and uh, misty moonlight wrapped with silver around it and you could take that apart if you wanted to have three different strands so there's a lot of versatility with this one too and this is the one I'm using on my card. And this is that Just Jade color. That's a new uh, end color. And I love gingham. So I was like, okay, I got to use that gingham ribbon. So those are all in a pack, in the new catalog, that is. So what I'm going to do, grab my six-inch piece of that ribbon. I'm going to grab my silicone. Oop, I covered it up. 
there we go. Get my silicone mat back in so I don't get glue everywhere. And my snail. I could use the glue on this, but I don't think ribbon sticks as well with glue. I think it does a lot better with the snail. And the snail is retiring too, by the way. A lot of you probably already know that. But um, we've got some new adhesive coming that's going to be really good. Now, as far as I know, I didn't check this morning. We still have refills available but uh, if you need any. But I can't wait to get our new adhesive. So I'm wrapping this right around the designer series paper like this. Oh, good, Cindy. I just saw that you liked the thing with the stamping mat. A friend of mine uh, decided to try that out, and she told all of us about it. I'm like, oh, yay, because <laughs> I was really sad that was leaving. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead. Now we've got the ribbon around it. I'm going to go ahead and do my glue again. I use, I use snail a lot, but whenever, and I emboss a lot, and I've gotten to where I think I've, I've told a lot of people this, those of you that are new, I think the glue works a lot better with embossed cardstock. It sticks on a lot longer. Sometimes, because this is, isn't liquid, it can't get into the crevices of the embossing, but the glue can. And that makes it stick on a lot better. So now we've got the card base ready. Now, when you, to die cut this, I've got a three and a half by three and a half inch piece of, um, oh, what is this new color? Bumblebee. This is the bumblebee color. If you've got the ornate garden, you saw that it had a, I used the bumblebee color. Well, this is it. We've been dying to see what it was. And I knew, I knew it had to be a yellow. It's a pretty yellow. And this is that um, cinnamon cider again, and that's another three and a half by three and a half. Now, a trick I have learned, because you're looking at this, like, how do you line this up? What I did, I picked a point and put a, um, put some, uh, I took a Sharpie marker and marked it right there, and then did, figured out which one needed to be marked on this one. Oh, oop, I wiped some of it off. That's one thing, I'm going to have to work on this. It was this one, and it looks like I wiped it off on my fingers. I'm wondering if nail polish would work better. I know I've at least, you, you might have to keep putting uh, a Sharpie on it as you use it. But I'm thinking if I put nail polish on that, I'm going to, if you guys have a suggestion, let me know and I'll uh, test it out. But I think it would be a lot easier to always have these two marked so that way I know how to line them up. So the, um, I want the background to be the yellow, so that just fits. And there's the one for the cinnamon one. And then you also need a scrap. This is a one inch square piece. And this is my center for the flower. And then with the leaves, I did three leaves for this card. So you're gonna die cut these three times. And this is just a strip I used. This was a uh, seven and a half by one and three quarter. So I was able to get all, so I just put them, put them down on the paper, ran them through, moved them down, ran them through. And then I'll show you how to put them together here in just a second. So after you die cut these, then when you lift this this up, you want to turn it or turn your piece the die cut around. Let me show you on the one I've already got die cut, and mark it on the back. So I took a pencil and marked that point here on the back. So while it was still in the die, actually when I lifted it up, it was actually still laying on the paper. But I was just I carefully picked up the paper and put a pencil mark there on the back. And I did the same with this. Once I picked it up, it probably, it's hard to tell in this video, but I make sure I mark the back of that point there. So now I know how to line it up when I go to line it up. It just makes it a lot easier when you get started. If you forget to do that, you can just keep playing around, turn this around until it matches up with this one. Okay those out of the way. Now I'll put this together. Now I do want this on the back because I don't want that showing. So let's turn that over and I'll make sure that point here. Let me grab my grid paper again. No, actually we want this. So make sure that point is sticking up. So there's my point. Got it sticking up. And on this one, I'm just going to put glue on this center part. I'm not going to worry about putting it on all of this. And it looked fine on my original. So I'm not going to worry about it. Actually, take that back. All these holes, I did not want my glue seeping out of that. So I'm actually, I actually use snail. Just made sure I covered this up pretty good. There we go. So now we've got that center. And once again, there's my point. Find my point. There's my point that I marked. So now I can line all this up really easy. Once it's lined up, then I just push that center down. And there we've got the sunflower done. 
or put together. We don't have the center done yet. Let me grab my little center piece. There we go. So here's the center I'll die cut. I like the little holes it puts in. And I wanted that popped up. So we're gonna grab a Stampin' Dimensional. You could go with black or the white with this one. Just grab my, take your pick tool, pop that up. Okay. And this will just go on the center, cover up that op uh, opening there. So now we've got that sunflower ready to go. Now we're gonna put some leaves together. So I'm gonna keep my silicone mat. I am so happy that they did, um, made the a bold leaf. I mean, we just have dies so we don't have to cut around here. There used to be, with these things, you put it on like a square piece and then you had to cut, fussy cut all the way around it. So glad we don't have to do that now. So we are going to have um, adhesive sheets again. But in the meantime, so we weren't able to get that yet. So I'm gonna use my fine tip glue pen. And when we do, I'll show you how to use that in another video. But I'm gonna take my fine tip glue pen and I think this works just as good. Oops, there we go. I was taking off this black thing too. I don't want that, I just want the cap off. I'm just gonna put dots like in these big sections here. That's what I like about this fine tip glue pen. You get those little narrow ones. I'm just gonna do a couple little areas here on the edges. Definitely here on the bottom of the stem. Little bitty stem that is. Maybe a little bit here on these, but you really don't need any on these inner things. It's not that big a deal. But I'm making sure I've got a, some on the top and bottom and a little bit on the sides and along the middle. And I found out, because when you pick this up, you end up getting glue all over your fingers. Turn this one upside down and you really can, you probably can't tell in the video, but you can tell which is the right side. This, this one kind of pops up a little bit, so I know that's the back. I'm gonna lay that down. And then turn it over and I can move it a little bit if it's not quite right. There, that way I don't have the glue on my fingers sticking to my leaf, it's a pain. <laughs> and then if it pops up like that just did for me, you just hold it down a little bit more. Actually, you could hold it down this way still. There we go. I can give you the info on that, Mary. I will let you know. See if, see if I missed any other. There we go. Oh, good. You're welcome, Marlene and Sandy. I'm glad I'm able to help you with some tips. I like... I hate for people to have to learn all these. I like learning them and I want to teach them to you so you don't go crazy with them. Okay, so we've got that and I wanted three more leaves. I went ahead and got those together. I knew I just needed to show you how to do the one. So we've got the three. I'm gonna look at my cheat sheet here. Okay, this I'm just gonna put um, actually glue since this is embossed. Sometimes I have to talk to myself so I remember how I do it. <laughs> I'm gonna put the glue. I'm just gonna put it here in the middle. I'm not gonna put it on the outside because I'm gonna tuck those leaves underneath and I don't wanna have to lift up. It's gonna be too hard to lift up that uh, sunflower. So I'm gonna bring it, let's turn it the way I want it. That looks pretty good. I think I like that way best. I'm gonna go overlap the ribbon a little bit. Hold it down here in the middle. There, that's stuck good. Now I can put my leaves where I want them. So I can lay them down first. I always lay things down before I glue them on. I want to put one down here. So let's grab this bottom one. You can put it all over. I decided not to put glue up here at the top. That way I don't get glue on my fingers. That way I can put that under here. And we'll do the same here. And I'm gonna have them overlap just a little bit. And that's the one nice thing about using glue too. I can still move it around. Once you push it down though, it's stuck. But when, if you just lay it down nice and easy and not push down too hard, you can move it around for a little bit. Now I'm gonna do that, stick it under. And now my sunflower's done. Isn't that pretty? I love these new end colors. They're really pretty. Now I didn't, there's one color I didn't use and I'll show you that here in a minute. That's four of the five new end colors on my one card. So we've got the um, misty, I gotta remember these, Misty Moonlight, the green is Just Jade, the yellow is Bumblebee, and the brown is Cinnamon Cider. Now we're gonna put a greeting on. This is a piece of Whisper White again. It's um, three and three quarter by three and a quarter. 
And like I said, I wanted to use, be able to show you what both of these labels look like. So now we're going to use this left one. And now I'm going to put one on each end and not just have it be a flag. So I added a half an inch to the length of what I wanted it to be. Because whenever you do per end, you want to add a quarter of an inch. That way you can put it in all the way. You don't have to worry about turning this over and lining it up on the edge. You just put it in all the way, punch it, turn it around, and punch it again. So now this is the other way you can do a label. And I'm going to grab, now this is also in the um, Celebrate Sunflower stamp set. It says thanks a bunch. Let me grab my early espresso. And stamp it right here. And there we go. I love that even with our rubber, we can still line it up because we can see through that block. And I think it's a lot easier. Now you can do it whichever way you want. You could stamp and then punch. I'm just always afraid if I stamp it in the wrong place, put it in my punch, I'm gonna cut off my words. So that's why I did it that way. Did my punching first and then did that. Now I'm gonna pop this up with dimensionals. I almost always use dimensionals on a card. Very, very rarely do I not use dimensionals. But I always only used one uh, pop up uh, one layer. Because if you do two of them, like if I had raised up this, uh, Sun, not, I did raise this up, but they're on the same level. I don't want another layer on top of these because then I wouldn't be able to mail it. Ooh, I should have let that dry a little bit. I smeared it a little bit, but that's okay. And now I'm going to put this across here. And one thing with our, my uh, card sketch, I didn't uh, specify a place to put a greeting, so you can put it wherever you want. So now here was the original layout, which is uh, paper down here, a square up here. And I put in on there any shape. So this one, I turned it this way, and that's the same layout, but two totally different cards that look nothing alike. And this made it quicker for me to put cards together. Using one sketch, I was able to just whip three totally different cards using that same sketch. I do that a lot. So there are the first two. We've got one more to go, and then we'll be done. This time I'm using the Tasteful Touches bundle that's in the new catalog. I love these labels. I'm going to be, these don't have to be used with just this stamp set, as you probably figured out on your own. I love all these labels. I can't wait to figure out all the greetings that fit in this. But the one I'm going to use is this one. And you're going to find out, it's hard to tell looking probably in the video, but there is like a little rim here. It's going to make a little bit of a rim around my labels. It's not just going to be a flat white piece, which I like. So I'm going to be using this die. I can't wait to see what these use. It looks like they're little zigzags. I haven't had had a chance to play with those yet but oh and then this tasteful so if you bought these together you get um, these 10% off rather than purchasing them separately so that's the same way with a level U the birds and branches and the celebrate sunflowers bundles I showed you so you save 10% bundling those okay let's see I'm gonna use a oh yes I am in love with this folder. This is probably one of my new favorites now. This is old world paper. So if you ever look at old documents from like, you think of probably Revolutionary War and things like that, it's parchment paper. This is kind of makes it look like parchment paper. Love this. So you'll be seeing what this looks like here in a minute. But that's, uh, I forget which one this was in. I think, um, I can't remember the sweets names, but you'll see it whenever you get the new catalog. So there's that. Now we'll get going. This is a piece of early espresso. Once again, it's a uh, five, uh, five and a half by eight and a half. We're gonna fold this in half. This is gonna be another portrait card. When I say landscape portrait, you probably already know this. This is landscape, that's portrait. So we're gonna be doing the sketch with this portrait. Now I'm gonna grab a piece of Knight, Knight of Navy and it would go inside here in the world, uh, old world paper. It's a five and a quarter by four inch. You run it through your die cutting machine. You always wanna do fold first. That protects the folder from getting hurt in your die cutting machine. Then it comes out looking, actually it comes out looking like this. It's a little hard, to, oh no, no, you can see it. Isn't that cool looking? I love that. Now this, I decided though, I liked this side better. It's got more of the ridges coming up. So you can use whichever side looks good for your card. This is more of a debossed look. 
and then that's uh, with the wrinkles coming up. So that's the side I'm going to use. But isn't that neat? I love that. That's going to work on so many masculine. That doesn't have to be masculine cards. Just any kind of rustic looking card. I love rustic look. The look. Rustic look. Okay, now we're going to grab. These are my papers here. This is a piece from the uh, one of my new favorite designer papers. Oh, what's it called? I've got it written down. Let me find it here. In Good Taste designer series paper. It's a bigger pack than usual. I'm trying to remember how much it is. I think it's $21. Something, yeah, $21. You get 24 12 by 12 sheets instead of just the regular 12. But it has a lot of wood grain. This is a wood grain. I decided not to use the wood grain side, but a lot of different shades of wood. And if you want to see that paper, make sure you check out my uh, Stampin' Up! unboxing video, and you can find a link to that in the video description. And that'll show you, every, I showed every single paper, every design of all the papers that I got. So if you, don't, if you want to see all the stuff I got, make sure you watch that video. But this is the side I'm using. This is another 4x2. Once again, let's grab that glue since we're working with embossing. I'm going to put that all the way around here. Okay. Stick it on. Now this, I'm, well, just to help me out, I'm going to make sure I have it down here on the bottom because I don't want it right on the edge. It's easier for me to see the bottom of that uh, navy piece. But when I'm done, the original sketch showed the paper down here at the bottom. Hi, Karen. Glad you're here. But we're going to be turning it around and do this. So that's going to be the top of my paper. And I'm going to grab, and this is something I totally forgot to show in my unboxing. I couldn't believe it. I had it out and didn't show it. This is Early Espresso Faux Suede Trim. I wish you could feel this. It's called Faux Suede, but it feels like it's real suede. It is so soft. It is, I love this ribbon. We've got a lot of neat ribbons this year, but this is Faux, faux Suede, and it really does feel like suede. So I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on each end. Wrap it around the edge of my paper again, like we've done with all the other cards. Make sure it's straight. And we'll go ahead and put it on the card. But this time I want to make sure I put that designer series paper on the top because we're doing a different version of that layout. Okay, oops, almost did it upside down. Get that right in the center. Okay. Push it down, make sure it's good and stuck. But doesn't that look neat? I love the texture with that. Okay, now we're going to bring in a piece of, um, let's see, this is very vanilla, three and three quarter by two and three quarter, and a little vanilla piece. It can be a scrap, but this is a two and a half by two. You want it to be at least that big. Now, this one is going to be for my label. So I find it this time I think it's easier the way I'm using this I'm going to die cut this first so you just center it on your cardstock and run it through your die cutting machine and then you come out with this label and I bet it's not going to show up very well but there is a neat border all the way let me see if I can move it around but there's a border all the way around it's not real thick it's a narrow one but it just gives the label makes it really look cool it's a really neat looking label this I'm going to stamp my flower and the, here's the flower from that stamp set. And I'm going to use Just Saying Hello. This is all from that um, Tasteful Touches stamp set I showed you here a minute ago. Bring in my early espresso. I'm going to bring in my pad. Yes, this is rubber, but I still like having a pad underneath it. And I want to stamp this on the right side. So I'm going to put the flower on the bottom left. There we go. That label being so big and I wanted it over on the right, I thought it'd be easier to do it that way. But you can do it whichever way you want. If you'd rather stamp first and then die cut it, that's fine. But there's the early express, so we'll put that here at the top. Now I'm going to take my flower. Oh, one thing I forgot I want to do. There is this really neat texture on this in the stamp set. I thought that was a neat look. I'm grabbing Smoky Slate, and the paint colors I'm using on this one are ones that are in the... Uh, Oh, I can never remember the name of it. In Good Taste Designer Series Paper. Now, I want a light version of this, so I'm going to stamp it off. And then I'm going to just stamp it over the words there. And that just gives it a neat little texture. That way, it's just not vanilla behind it. 
you could go ahead and stamp it a couple more times if you want to, but I decided just to stick with uh, it going on the uh, greeting. Oh, hi, Ruth. Okay, now I'm going to grab my flower. Oh, there we go. Well, my voice is getting all scratchy. It must be getting dry down here. Okay, so here's my pretty flower. Now, this one you almost don't have to color in, but I decided to color it in. But I'll show you. Isn't that neat? So if you didn't want to color that in, if you, I could have done that in navy, and it probably would have been just fine not coloring it in. But isn't that a pretty flower? I really like that a lot. I could tell it was going to be pretty, but it looks even prettier once you stamp it. But I decided to color it in. I did use early espresso, and I found out, usually you use your tuxedo black memento, but I didn't want black on my flower. So since these are also, our classic ink pads are also water-based, you can use your Stampin' Blends because they're alcohol-based. So it won't bleed. Now you couldn't, like if you use Stazon, you can't use Stazon because that's alcohol-based and these are alcohol-based and then they'd be able to mix, it would lighten up or start to make the ink bleed. So what I'm going to do, I'm only going to color part of this, but see, they've done all the work for us. All those lines that are in that flower, those are the areas that I want to be darker. So I'm going to take my Dark Knight of Navy Stampin' Blend and color in and do the little jagged lines because you don't want it to be a perfect um because flowers aren't perfect if you had a straight line it would look kind of funny so i'm just going to go through and do a couple of these here so i'm doing all with the dark okay that's probably enough to give you an idea then take my light night of navy and i'm going to color in the whole thing and I'm, as you can see i'm coloring over that dark that i just laid down because that helps those shades blend and it's not such a stark difference between the shades. I don't know if you'll see that or not, but that's that gave, gave it a really neat shading. And then I took my dark, I just went ahead and used the dark Daffodil Delight to color in the inside. Because there's the um, brown that's in there, I thought darkened up, made enough detail, I didn't have to have two different shades. So you would um, color all that in and then fussy cut it because there isn't a dye to do this, but it cuts really easy. Let me show you, I'll just start it. The trick with cutting, you want to move the paper, not your scissors. So once you get started, I always start away from it and kind of go at a curve, start curving before I get there so I don't get the sharp um, cutting. And when you do it, I wanted to have a little bit of a vanilla border around it because I'm going to be putting on top of this navy um, cardstock here and thought it would probably blend too much. So as you can see, I'm barely, I am moving the scissors, but not much. And you just keep moving that paper, and that gives you nice, smooth cuts. So we keep doing that. I'm not going to make you sit and watch me do that. Here's one that's all finished. Isn't that flower gorgeous? And you can see all the different sh I think you can see the shading a little bit there. It's got nice little shadings. It's just so pretty. I love that flower. But I wanted to do a little more than just put this here. I mean, this looks good. We could have definitely just gone with that, and it would have been a pretty card. But... I was dying to use this paper. Let me get this out of the way. This is called, got to remember what it's called, Flower, oh, no, Forever Gold Laser Cut Specialty Paper. Isn't that beautiful? It, let me bring it down so you can see the whole thing. It is all die cut for you. You get three sheets. I think it's nine and three quarter by 10 inch pieces. So you get three of this sheet here. And what I'm going to use, I'm using this one here. And I'll show you how, yeah, I've seen a bunch of wows and likes. Isn't it gorgeous? I love this. And you can't, one thing I forgot to show in my um, unboxing video, if you wanted to color, if you didn't want the gold, you could do the white side. You can take ink and sponge it and make it a different color. So there are different options you can use. But I'm definitely using the gold on this one. So there we've got that. And then there's another sheet that you get three of. So it's six sheets all together. So you get three of that sheet. I like how they give us tissue paper to keep them from getting scratched up. But then there's this sheet, and I don't know if you've ever gotten their laser cut paper before, but usually when they had these blocks, you would have to cut them out and get them to work. These are already die cut for us. They pop right out just like that one I just did. So if I wanted to use this, I'm not using this one, but if I wanted to, see, it's all popped up and I can just put it on my card. Very cool. Oh, and I did forget something else, so I'm going to put that paper back on to take care of it. I do want this, yeah, this leaf here. I'm going to use this leaf also thought my flower needed some leaves. So that's what we're going to use with the gold. Let me bring those, bring those back in. Bring in the silicone mat. 
Okay, let me get these back in the picture so you can see everything. Sometimes it's hard to get everything in the video. There we go. Now I'm only going to put glue here. Once again, we've got that embossed. Let's use my liquid glue. Actually, it's better to, easier to do it holding it. So I've got that whole big circle covered with my glue. And kind of move around till it looks the way I want it. Really, there's really no right, wrong way to do it. Just make sure it's in, the, in there. Bring it down just a little bit. Hold that down. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> Let me get that in the light a little better. Isn't that cool? I love that. Okay, now look at my other one. Okay, now we're, I'm going to put this. The neat thing with this, this circle, if this label is big enough, I'm going to cover up that circle. So all that's going to be showing is this, which, I mean, you can go for look at, make a smaller circle and have that little stitched area, which is good, but that's not the look I was going for. I just wanted the leaves and stuff to hang out the outside of the uh, label. So you can use snail or glue, whichever, since I've got my glue handy. Make sure I cover up that circle, get it in the center, you can move it around a little bit. That looks pretty good. Hold it down for a few seconds. Okay, now I'm going to be putting this leaf on my flower, since I'm not sure exactly where I want it, I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to put, I do know I want it up here near the top. So I'm going to put, isn't that neat? That's the other side. You do want the blends to seep, to uh, soak through the paper. That gives you a neat look, look there. So if you wanted it more of an impressionist look, you could go with that side. But I'm going to put snail, make a big section, bigger than what I need, because I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put that leaf. I might even put a little bit up here. So without laying this down, I'm going to hold it about where I want it. I think I want to make sure it gets, it's underneath that hello. I don't want to cover that up. And I think I want the leaf to go about right there. That looks pretty good. Push it down just a little bit because I don't want this sticking down, the flower sticking there. Now I had all that snail and that's all glued in and I don't have to worry about putting glue on all that ornate stuff right there. Now I want that to be popped up. And I am going to put a dimensional on top of that leaf, too, to make sure it stays anchored. Since it's kind of big, we're going to do three. That'll make it so it doesn't wobble on me. Uh, there we go. Get these off. Oops, I didn't get that one, I don't think. There we go. Now lay it down, and once again, make sure I'm not covering up my hello. You want the flower to still be within your card. That looks good. And there we go, there's card number three. I thought that gold really made it, made it look special. I love that. I'm happy with the way this one turned out. So let me bring all the cards in so you can see them real quick. Oops, knocking things down again. Okay, this was, well here, let me show you the picture that showed the, um, oops, if I can get it to work. Okay, there's the card uh, layout we used. There on the left. So this was the one that used the original card layout. Then we turned it this way to do the sunflower. And then I did another portrait with this one. Here, let's do it. I think I've got room. No, oh, there we go. That works. And this one was flipping the card this way to get the other look. So those are three different looks. And then if you wanted to make a fourth card, you could do it this way and have the paper on the right. There's so many different thing, ways you can do that layout. You can do a mirror image, just tons of different things you can do. So I hope you liked today's, this week's uh, live video. Yeah, Jeanette, doesn't that make it look fancy? I really thought that looked cool. I was glad I remembered that paper. I'm like, oh, I can use that laser cut paper. So that's the cards for this week. I'll be back again next Wednesday at 3, um, 3 p.m. Eastern time with some more cards. Not sure what I'm going to make, but uh, I might do some retired stuff this time because I, I don't want to just show you things you can't get right now and make you frustrated. But I wanted to get you excited about the new catalog, too. So I'll be sharing um, probably retired. We'll see. I'll let you know when I figure out what I want to do. <laughs> but um, in the meantime, during the week, I'm planning on getting some of my recorded videos up on YouTube, too. So those of you on YouTube probably see my little subscribe button below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, just click the subscribe button. Then when you do that, make sure you click on that bell and select all. That way YouTube notifies you every time I upload a video. That way you don't miss any. Um, oh good, Sandy, I'm so glad you liked 
like the cards. I hope you guys all had fun. Um, but those of you on Facebook, um, hope, if I missed any of your questions, and same on YouTube, I'll get them answered. Those of you on YouTube, I'll have to do them in the regular comments since I can't edit, uh, go back and do anything in the ch live chat. But uh, where was I going? Oh, yeah. If you're on uh, Facebook and want to see my YouTube channel, I've got a link below in the, district, the description. And like I said to the YouTube people, you can hit the subscribe button and make sure you click all and you'll be notified whenever I do a video. So I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, guys, and stay safe. Bye.